Hello and welcome to TDS. In this notebook, we're going to see an introduction to PyCarrot and some of the important functions that you can use when it comes to PyCarrot. If you are not familiar with PyCarrot, this is an introduction to PyCarrot and I would like you to stick around. If you are already familiar with PyCarrot, these are some of the important functions that you can use when it comes to PyCarrot. So I would like you to stick around to the end of this video. In the subsequent videos, we're going to see some of the more advanced features of PyCarrot that we can use in different domains. So let's get started. So over here, the first thing that I would do is to import the various libraries. So import libraries. All right. So the first library that I'm going to need is, um, I'm going to import pandas as pd. Then I'll import numpy as np then I'm going to import um let me import matplotlib dot pyplot so it's already here so I'm just going to press enter and then I'm going to import seaborn All right, so these are the libraries that I'll be using so far. And, uh, and as we progress, if we need any other libraries, we're going to import them as the need arises. All right, so the data set that we're going to use over here is actually a COVID-19 data set. And uh, what we're trying to do is to actually figure out whether we're supposed to put a patient in an intensive care unit, or that is ICU or not, based on the on the windows period, that is the period that the person got um, infected with the disease to so the period that the person started showing signs of the disease. So normally it will be um, maybe maybe within a week or within two weeks, right, normally. But some can go as far as um, beyond, beyond say six weeks or 12 weeks, all right? So based on these factors, are we supposed to put these patients in an intensive care unit or not all right so that's basically what we're going to do so i'm going to load this data set and i'm going to um read it over here so i'm going to use pd.read and this is actually in an sl format so i'm going to use um, pd.read underscore sl all Okay, so let's load our data set. All right, so now everything is done. Now let's see the first five rows or the head of the data to see how our data is. So I'm going to use data.head. Okay, so this is our data set that we have. Um, this is the COVID-19 data set. Uh, that you have over here now you can see that um as the patients visit the hospital they give um an identifier to these patients so you can see that we have patient visit identifier over here and then those that are aged above 65 right whether the person is aged above 65 or not so we can see that i mean those are the vulnerable people those are the people that got affected the most with regards to this um situation and some other other factors you can see we have um, age percentile over here we have gender and then their disease are also being grouped in um, different groupings right that is group one all the way to group six and some other factors that you can actually um, figure out over here some mean of um, some factors right so you can see some mean of some other factors right that have been actually identified over here okay so you can all see, or you can go all the way to this part. You can see that we have um, blood pressure systolic uh, median, right? Heart rate median, respiratory rate median, temperature median, um, oxygen saturation median. So all these factors have been combined together to help us to be able to predict whether we're supposed to put these patients into intensive care units or not. Right, and there are some other um, in now values in there, so you can see some NANs in there, right? If you go all the way down here, now you can see um, we have the window period over here, right? So um, 0 to 2, so within 0 to 2, the person started showing signs and uh, whether we're supposed to put this patient in um, intensive care unit or not. So you can see that we have ICU here, 
which is nothing but the intensive care unit and you can see it's comprises of zero and then one right we can actually see that by just doing um data then we just select icu all right then we do unique right so if we do unique over here all right so this one will help us to actually see um the unique values that we have in icu so over here you can see that we have zeros and then ones okay so whether we are supposed to put the candidate in icu or not so that's why you see zero and then one over here now our, our main focus here is to actually get introduced to this PyCaret, right? PyCaret and some of the functions that we can use when it comes to PyCaret, all right? So um, if you don't have the PyCaret, what you can do is to actually install this PyCaret. So I'm going to do pip, then I'll do install, then I'll do PyCaret, all right, so that's it. Now if I do this, you see that it will start installing PyCaret for me. See that everything is being installed over here. So we wait a little while for these to install. All right, so everything is installed successfully. So after that, um, the next thing that you can do is to actually um, enable this in Google Collapse. Since I'm using Collapse, I need to enable it. So I'm going to do from PyCaret, right? From PyCaret.utils. I'm going to actually import enable collapse, right? And that's what I have to do. And then um, I can just do enable. Okay, so now you can see the collab mode is activated, right? You can see that it's activated over here. You can just do import PyCaret over here. And then you can do from PyCaret dot classification because we're going to actually need this classification, right? So, and then we're going to import everything over here. So we're going to import star, All right? So that's basically what you need to do over here. And then you run that. Okay, now everything is done. Now what you can do next is to actually set up your environment now this point is very very important because this is when um, all the steps that we do in um, all the steps that we actually do with regards to exploratory data analysis is actually going to be done over here so if you see the um, if you go to the pi character documentation right um, if you go to setting up your environment it's actually it actually does everything that you can think of everything that you can actually think of when it comes to exploratory data analysis right so if you go down down here you can actually see that it does almost everything that you can actually think of um categorical features categorical imputation right um checking for numerical features if you go all the way normalizing your data right so it does all these things for you all these things we could have done it manually but in this case you don't actually need to do that right so you can see that all the things that you you'll be doing manually will be done automatically for you right removing out liars right so all these things we would have done it manually right removing multicollinearity all these things are the things that we are supposed to do when it comes to if we're doing um exploratory data analysis manually we would have done all these things right but when you set up this environment it's actually going to do all this for you without you going through all those things right without you doing that so it's just actually automating everything for you and cutting down your i mean the time that you're going to use to clean this data set right so let's see how you actually going to set up this so i'm going to create a new variable and then uh, i'm going to set up this environment by doing this and then one thing that you need to specify is the data set that you're actually um using right you can do data equals and then you specify the name of the variable that you use when you are loading your data set so in this case i used um i load my data set as the, i just called my variable here which is containing my data set i just called it data so i can just um put the data here right so if you call it any other name maybe df or something you can also put it there right so if i had called it um maybe data set i would have put it here 
okay i would have put um that that name over here but since i just called it data so i'm just going to put it here and then i can even ignore this part right and then just call um, just put the name of my data set over here okay one thing that you need to note over here is that you need to specify your target so in this case our target is icu right so that is very important part you need to actually specify it because it's going to do all those expiratory data analysis and you need to know the target that um so that it will work with the target accordingly right the target that you've you've specified so that it will work with the target accordingly all right so let's run this part and see what comes out okay so now what it's going to do is that it's going to now you see that it has come up with all the variables that you have right it has come up with all the variables that you have now it's going to actually ask you with that so go through all these variables that it has come up with and see if everything is okay then press enter right and then press enter so that it can continue right so you see that over here it's just waiting for user input it will it's waiting for you to press enter right so let's see what it has done over here let's see now it has identified the data types of these columns so if you see say patient visit identifier right if you see our data set up here you see that that one is an is um is actually an integer so it identif uh, it's identifies it as as integer so it will do that for all the other um variables that you have in your data set it will do that for all, the, all of them now if you go through and everything is fine right if you go through and everything is fine you see that some are categorical so age is either um the person's age is above 64 i mean 65 or not so that is categorical so that you see that it has identified for example gender is either the person is a male or female so you see that it has identified it as categorical so if everything is fine you just press enter and then you continue if it's not fine you can just press um quit and then that's all you can type quit actually right you can type quit um in the user input over here right so in this case i'm just going to press enter so that i can continue with it all right so now everything is fine you see that everything is is actually working fine over here all right so this is then now there are quite a lot of things that actually goes on here right so uh, if you just do this setup there are quite a lot of things that actually goes on here so you can see that we have um we have description we have value here right so there are a lot of things so these are things that you're supposed to do manually but these are being done for you automatically right so you can see that we have some um, target type it's a binary that is zero and one whether the patient is supposed to go to ic unit or not we have original um, data being this right so we're supposed to check all these check some missing values and it's true of course there were some missing values so if you see our original data set you can see that there are some nans in here right so there are some missing values in there all right so all this will be checked automatically for you right whether there are some high cardinality in there um, what are you to, supposed to transform the train set or test set? I mean, all these are being done for you. Categorical imputer, um, normalizing the data. I mean, all these are done for you, right? You don't need to do this manually. We're removing outliers, uh, remove multicollinearity if there are any, right? I mean, these are things that we're supposed to do manually, right? Checking um, imbalance and fixing the imbalance, right? We are supposed to do all these manually, right? So if to check if the, if the data is imbalanced, you have to use the smooth method to actually do that, right? So we're supposed to do all this EDA by hand or manually, but this setting up the environment, the function that we just used has actually done everything um, at the background for us automatically without us doing that. Okay, so let's see how, so we can go straight away to see the models, right? It has actually done that. So let's see, um, maybe we, see, we can see the best models over here by just using the compare models command, right? So we have compare model, right? Now, if I do this, right, it's actually going to compare the various models that uh, we, we, we have over here in Pyka, right? So let me run this and then we see the output that will come. 
Now you can see that's actually um, building all these models and then comparing them with regards to the accuracy, the ACU, the recall, the precision. So normally we could have, I mean, prepared the data set before we build this and then check the classification report and, and, and things like that. But this has already automated all those process so that we will not need to go through this. Okay, this has already automated this process so that we, do, we will not need to go through this. So that you see, you can, now you can see that various models are being built over here and uh, the accuracy and the AUC and everything is being compared over here for you, right? It's, it's actually in, in, in progress. So you can see the progress bar over here. And uh, the one which is currently working, you can see that it's, it's actually over here, okay? So you wait for a while for it, for, for it to finish processing. You can actually see which model is actually doing well for you okay okay so now we can see that it's almost finished over here all right now everything is complete and over here you can actually see that all these models have been built for us so that 15 different models have been built for us and uh the accuracy the auc the record the precision the f1 and among other metrics have been compared over here. So you can see the ones that are having the highest accuracy. In this case, um, Cat Boost is actually having the highest accuracy, which is um, 0 0.8, right? And then you can see that um, AU, uh, when it comes to AUC, um, uh, Light GBM is the one doing well for us over here, right? With, with the highest being 0 0.92. And also um, when it comes to Recall, you can see that uh, Light GBM is still having the highest recall. Precision, you can see that for precision, um, card boost is having the highest precision, right? So F1, you can see that. So all these um, have been actually compared for us. We could have done these manually, which will, which would have taken a lot of time, but with this um, pie rate, everything is automated for you so that you will not actually need to do that. So if I'm um, comparing the model with your target that you really want to see which model is going to do well for you, you can each actually use PyCare to shortcut your process to actually make things move faster for you. Okay. So over here, you can actually uh, retain the best model based on certain metrics. So for instance, if you want to retain the best model based on say AUC, you can actually specify um, over here. So in this case, we did not give any parameter. So let me actually um, do that. Maybe over here, I can make it maybe um, best based on AUC, right? So you can actually specify it inside here right? without maybe if, if if that is your focus, maybe you want to see the, the best um, model based on accuracy, right? Based on accuracy, you can actually specify it or based on AUC or recall, you can actually specify it over here, right? So inside here, you can put, um, you can put for instance, sort and then sort equals, and then you give what you actually want to sort. So in this case, maybe you want to sort it based on AUC. Okay, so if you do this, it's actually going to return the best model based on AUC, right? So if you run that, now you see that it's, it's actually running. So it's going to run everything, and then it's going to give us um, the boys. It's going to give us the best model based on AUC, as we have specified. We could have also specified based on accuracy or whatever you want okay so this one this one will actually help you to automate your process without you spending much time doing the disparity data analysis before coming here right so these are actually automated for you okay so you can see that it's almost finished now it's done now you can see that um now it's, it's actually based or sorted based on the auc for us so you can see that we have um, the highest over here. So if you compare this with what we had earlier on, um, this one, I mean, the, if you don't specify the default is accuracy, that's why you can see that the first one that we did, you see the accuracy was here, right? But this one, the focus was not on accuracy. That's why you see that um, cut boost is actually being placed second over here, right? Unlike first, the cut boost was first over here, right? Because by default, it's actually um, sorting this, this based on accuracy, right? But you can sort it based on any of the other metrics, right? So in this case, we sorted it based on AUC. Now you can see that light GBM is the one giving us um, in AUC. And AUC is a good way of, I mean, representing 
your i mean your data set and finding i mean a good insight in here right because as you see actually represent the degree or i mean measure of separability that is how well your model is able to separate um, between um, the the two classes that you want to classify right so it, it actually tells you how much um, the model is capable of distinguishing between the classes and uh, the higher the AUC, the better the model is at predicting, um, in this case, zeros as zeros and then ones as ones, all right? So we, that's, that's basically what we want to actually do. So we can sort it out based on the AUC, right, to see which model is doing well. So if we want to take any of these model to production, um, probably we will base on the um, AUC and then we take say light GBM to production, right? However, um, CAD boost is also doing well for us. Even with AUC, it's almost it's almost near to the AUC of um, of light GBM. So both of them will work fine in production for us. Okay, and if, if we can also sort it based on uh, recall, and for recall, you can actually see that um, light GBM is actually doing very well, right? So maybe overall, we can we can actually consider light gbm because even if you see the accuracy we can see that the accuracy of um, light gbm is almost almost um closer very close to 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 um cat boost classifier okay so probably light gbm is better in this case than any of um the other other models over here okay so this this pie carrot will help you automate all these process in the in a quite simple way that um, you don't need to actually do this by manually. Now we can also check, um, compare th some specific models, right? We can also compare some specific models. So let's actually do that. Maybe we can actually do best. We can actually do best, um, best specific. Let me just name it like that. Best specific model, right? So we can actually also compare some specific models. So if I do compare, right if i do compare models then inside the compare models what i'm going to actually do is that over here you need to be very careful because if you go to the documentation over here and um you go to the compare models right you can see that um those models if you see the parameters that you have here right you can specify some as blacklist you can specify some as um whitelist right so blacklist is just those that you want you don't want to compare right by default it's none but if you want to take um, certain models out so in this case maybe we could have blacklisted some of the ones that are down here right we don't want to spend time comparing them so that the time that it would take to compare this will actually reduce we could have also done that right and then white list that is um, some of the some of the models that we really want to compare with i mean maybe in this case we could have maybe white listed light GBM, cut boost, and then gradient boost classifier. We could have done that by just specifying it over here. All right. What you need to know is that all these these um, parameters are being outdated. That is the white list and black list. All right. So what is I mean currently what you can do over here is that instead of um, doing white list to include some of the parameters, so you can actually see it over here. You can actually use in exclude right and then include right that is that's what you can currently use instead of um doing white list and black list okay so um i want to compare certain certain um models so i'm going to use include and then inside include um, i'm going to use the, since i want to compare several models it's going to be a list of, of that right um yeah it's going to actually be a list of that so i'm actually going to compare um let's say the first let me compare this one so cut boost right so i'm going to compare cut boost then i'll also compare um maybe light gbm because that is also doing well for me so i can do um light gbm over here then i can also do um what else can i compare maybe i should compare sg boost so the first the first um three right so i can also do sg boost over here okay so that is that is done so let me run this and then we can actually see that it's actually going to compare these um three for me right 
All right, so over here you can actually see that we've been able to compare um, the three models that we specified over here, right? Without actually doing all the 15 um, models, right? We've been able to compare only three of them, right? Which you can actually see over here. So you can also do this to cut the time that it actually takes to run all these, okay? You can, I mean, do it in a, in a different way. I mean, you can also specify, for instance, um, in this case, we specified the model, but it could have, it could have also maybe retained the top three, right? By just um, doing using the same thing, so the create um, create underscore model, right? So inside that, I could, I could have also specified that I want the n, right? So we have a parameter called n select, right? So for n um, select, what I want to do is to, is to select the top three. So I could have also um, done it this way okay so we i mean there are different ways of doing it um i'm not going to run this one so but you can also do this right so all right so what i'm going to do over here is to actually create a specific model right so in this case um we we actually compared these models but we've not created any of them right so if have identify the top three so maybe um we can create card boost, right? Or maybe light GBM, right? Which was quite doing well. We can create that. So maybe, um, right? So specifically, I can just create um, light GBM model, right? So I can do light GBM, right? I can create this model. So inside here, I'm going to specify that I want to create um, light GBM bm model okay i can just specify that or maybe i mean not specifically as um light gbm but you can do it for say s s s g boost as well right so um s g boost right so but i mean based on your own preference and then over here you can specify s g boost okay so whatever model that was doing well for you when you compared, you can actually create it over here, right? And there are some other hyper parameters that you can actually specify or you can just um, ignore. So for SB, for SG boost, I can actually specify the max depth, right? So I can do max depth, right? I can actually specify that one. Maybe I will just set this to 10, right? And then uh, I can run this. Now you see that it's just creating that particular model for me, okay? Because if you want to deploy this in production, you need to actually create this model. What we did earlier on is to compare this model and then see which one is doing well so that we can actually create it. In this case, I'm creating SG Boost over here, but you can, as as we saw earlier on, we, we can see that um, Light GBM is actually doing well for us, so we could, could have actually created that one. So over here, instead of SG Boost, we could have put Light GBM over here, okay? Now you see that this model has been created for me. So what we could have done in um, with regards to the manual way of doing it, right? We could have created this model, uh, split our data set and um, create it. So, I mean, in this case, everything is automated for us, so we don't need to be doing all of those um, things, right? So you can actually maybe, let me just show you what is inside here that you can actually see that it's, it's actually created, right? Now you can see that we have SGB classifier being created over here with other hyperparameters. So the only thing that we set was the max depth, which is um, equals to 10, right? We could have set all these other hyperparameters as well, okay? We can also plot this model and have a visual understanding of this uh, model. So we can do plot, plot model, right? So plot underscore model. And then inside there, we can pass um, our SG boost, right? We can pass our SG boost over here. Now you can see that's been um, plotted over here. Now we have an uh, ROC curve for this SGB classifier, right? And you can see that over here, we have um, the highest AUC was um, with regards to the micro average, right? Which is um, micro average ROC curve is the one 
having the highest um, AUC. So you see that all those processes that we you, we do manually, all right, we are we've been able to do all these just I mean with this automated um, library over here, right? So just plot model will actually do everything, right? Giving us this RSC curve and. Um, Everything that we could have specified manually is being automated here for us. Okay. What we can also do is to evaluate this model by using evaluate, right? This is another function that you can actually um, use, right? So inside here, this is the model that I want to evaluate. So I just run that. You see that? So you don't need to be writing a lot of code to actually do this, okay? So over here, you see that what we have is that we have uh, the we have the hyperparameters, we have the AUC confusion matrix, um, validation curve, uh, dimensions, precision, and recall, everything, right? Feature selection, uh, feature importance. I mean, a lot of things over here, right? So for instance, if I want to see the AUC curve, I just click on the AUC curve, and it's going to display that for me. Now you see that it's, it's displayed over here, right? So if I want to see the confusion mattress, I just click on the confusion mattress over here. Now you can see that I have a confusion mattress being um, displayed over here. If I want to see maybe the feature importance, I can click on the feature importance over here so that I also get to know which features are important in this, um, in this, in this analysis, which features are contributed most. For me to be able to classify these patients into um, what are the persons supposed to go to ICU or not, right? So you, it will process it, and then uh, now you see that I have all the features that are important. So uh, over here you can see that um, respiratory rate max is actually the feature which is contributing most, right? Followed by respiratory rate median. And then the window above 12, right? So if the person, the window, I mean, the, the period between the time that the person got um, contacted with the virus to the time that the sign started showing, right? If it is above 12 or that is 12 weeks, I mean, then you can actually see that it's crit the case is critical and the person is supposed to go to ICU units. And that's why you can see that it's actually contributing. So it's part of the features that are actually contributing for us to be able to predict um, whether the patient is supposed to go to ICU unit or not. Okay, so I mean, this is quite awesome and makes your work, I mean, easier instead of doing it manually, okay? So the next thing that we can actually do is to interpret this model. So I'm going to use, I'm going to, let me actually do this. Um, okay, so I'm going to do interpretation. of model, right? Okay, and then over here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, I'm going to use interpret model. So interpret underscore model, all right? And then inside here, what I want to interpret is my model. And then, um, all right, then I can also um, plot it based on reason, right? So I can do this. Then I'll, I'll write here reason. All right. So let's run this. Okay, so um, we have an error here saying that shop library not found, pip install shop to use that. Okay, so now we need to install this library. So let me go here and then um, I'll add one more code above. Over here, I'm going to do um, I'm going to do pip install shop. All right, so that's that's what I'm going to do. I need to first install this before we can use um, we can use the interpret model. Right now, you see that it's been installed successfully for me. Now we can run this interpret model again. Okay, now you see that you see what we have over here. We have a, a beautiful plot over here, right? With our variables over here. Okay, you can see that we have it um, over there, 
and then we have what we can plot against right over here too so we see that we have it um we have it above here and then we have it over here so we can actually um plot this so we can actually change these variables that we have so for instance i can change it to say gender and the plot will actually change i can change it to say the window period between six and then um maybe check it with uh, let's see some of the variables that was contributing that was respiratory so maybe um let me see if i'll find respiratory respiratory rate minimum right so i can also do that over here and then um i can also do it for all the other variables as well right and each of them is going to actually give me um, a different a different plots right each of these are going to give me a different plot over here so we can actually use this to actually um have a visual interpretation of our model right so you can you can just use any variable any two variables and then compare them and you can actually um actually see these values being annotated for you right you can see them being annotated for you so unlike the manual way that we do we do without um seeing without having any visual interpretation although we can do that we can plot that but you can actually see that we just this one line of code we can actually do a lot of things right so the next thing that we can actually do is to actually make um make some predictions right so i'm going to um not here i'm actually going to do that um maybe i'll do this so make predictions that's what we want to do so let's see if our model that we have built don't forget that um we have built an sg boost model right from here you can see that we've, we've actually built an sg boost model so we're going to make some predictions based on this sg boost model okay so um, maybe we can create a variable called print and then for that we can just use predict underscore model okay we can use this predict underscore model to actually make that prediction so we have our sg boost model over here and um the data so here we need to specify the data that we're going to use so the data that we're going to use we, we stored everything in data if you remember when we load this right when we loaded it we named it as data so that's the variable that is containing all the data that we have all right so let's go all the way down now we specify that one here one thing that you need to actually do over here is to make sure that you drop the target over here because you are not going to make the prediction based on the based on the target okay you need to actually take that one off because that's what your model need in order to see right so i'm going to take the icu off right and then i'll specify that what i'm dropping is actually in the column by doing axis equals one all right so let me run this and see all right now you can see that um it's, it's actually done so if i want to maybe check i can just do a print right so um the prediction is actually done over here so let's see what is what is inside this this variable this prediction variable over here okay so this is basically what is inside here all right so um if you go all the way here right let's go all the way here now you see that we have a new variable here right we have a new variable called label right so it has been able to label these right um previously it was icu which was there and then which was containing zeros and ones that is whether the person or the patient is supposed to be in the icu unit or not but in this case we don't have the icu remember that we dropped it okay so now it has been able to create a new label to be able to label them whether the person is supposed to go to IC units or not, right? So we see that we have zeros and ones over here. So what we can do over here is to actually check um, which of these patients have been grouped as to, I mean, grouped as zero or labeled as one, that is those that are supposed to go to intensive care units and those that are not supposed to go to intensive care units. So I'm going to do a print over here right i'm going to do print over here and then inside that i'm going to select my label and then i'll check the ones that are equivalent to zero right so that's basically what i'm going to do over here and then i'll run that 
Now over here you can see that it's actually showing us false, 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 showing that we actually don't have any zeros in there. But we can actually see if we go here, if we go all the way um, to the labels, we can actually see that we have some zeros and ones there. But when we try to see which ones are grouped into zero or which ones are labeled as zero and which ones are labeled as one we can see that it's telling us false false meaning that we don't have any zeros in here so what we can do is that um maybe this is actually stored as a string instead of an integer right so what we can do is to actually use str right and then try that one two and then see if that will actually give us any good results now you can see that we have some trues and false in there. So where we have zeros will be true, where we have um, one will be false. Okay, so now you can see that it's, it's actually being stored as, as a string instead of um, an integer. Right? So these are what some of the things that you need to actually do as a um, data scientist. So maybe we can actually see some specific columns by just um, doing something like this right and then over here I can specify which columns I want to see right so maybe I want to see the windows column right so we have if you go to the column names let me go a little bit up right so we have windows we have labels and then score and then some other 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 column names so I'm going to just specify some of them over here that I want to see right so I want to see the windows right um it's actually a window then um, i also want to see the score right i would like to see the score and then i would like to see uh, maybe gender i'm just writing in the way the same way it has been stored i mean the same way the column name is being um, stored over there right so let me run this one and then see so i just want to see these columns together with the labels okay so now you can see that we have it over here right? so we have window we have score gender and then label right so all the labels that are zeros are going to come right so we have gender female and male so you can see zero and one one here if you have score and then the window period right so um so these ones have been labeled as zero and then if you want to see those that have been labeled as one we can also do the same thing over here right so instead of zero i'm going to do one okay if I run that, you can see that I have all those that are labeled as one. And interestingly, you can see that most of the gender are male. That is one. I mean, zero represent female, one represent male, right? So you can see that most of them are male, right? So I mean, in, in most most male are being infected by this disease, and it's actually showing here. And uh, you can also see that those that are having their window period above twelve, those are considered as critical cases and they are supposed to go to the um the intensive care unit right that is the icu right and uh, although there are some anomalies in here you can see that some uh, i mean having a window period of zero to one but i mean zero to two but it's still they are being considered as going to the ic unit based on other factors right some are having low immune system so although the uh, window period is short but they are still having critical conditions and they still need to go to the icu unit so you can see that we've been able to label all these um correctly over here right just doing this so i mean in a nutshell you can actually see that PyCarate actually automated the process for you and uh, makes your work quite easier um, if you compare it with the other i mean the manual way of doing it okay so feel free to explore these and if you go to the um, in the sites, I mean the PyCarrot documentation, there are a lot of um, things here that you can actually learn from. I mean, there are some tutorials for beginners and intermediates. There are some models that you can actually check over here, some processes that you can actually see. So feel free to check the documentation as well. And um, I'll see you in the next video where we also be doing anomaly detection using um PyCarrot, right we're going to do anomaly detection using PyCarrot in the next video so um see you in the next video have a nice day